my dear brothers and sisters today being the july 3rd the feast of uh, saint thomas the apostle i would like to speak to you something about saint thomas and we will continue our bible study on the acts, acts of the apostles from tomorrow onwards and let us reflect about something about saint thomas the apostle as we all know saint thomas the apostle was sent to india and parthia and india and all these areas and it's there are some people even believe that they went uh, saint thomas the apostle went to china and at some other places but it is uh, it, there are proofs that saint thomas had come to india the earliest proof is from the church fathers letters saint ephraim of syria the church father he has written in his letters that saint thomas was in india and he preached the gospel in india in the first century in ad 52 he came to india in the south india and he preached the gospel and in ad 72 he was martyred in south india and there and later his remains mortal remains were taken to edessa and uh, he was taken was taken later to edessa and he was buried there and his tomb is still there in these two places so uh, and also we believe that there was saint thomas christians from the first century itself uh, in india especially in south india so that is why the church um in india is celebrating the feast of saint thomas on this day so saint thomas uh, was also known as a doubting thomas because there are um, there are two people whom the bible consider in in a, in a way negatively one is judas iscariot and as we know he betrayed jesus and the saint thomas is considered as doubting thomas because he doubted the resurrection he doubted the resurrection so the doubting of uh, saint thomas uh, that uh, that uh, he doubted the resurrection it is not something uh, should be considered negatively because <clears throat> this doubting that saint thomas had is same thing that we all have because when jesus appeared to the disciples jesus appeared first we read like this gospel of john chapter 20 and was 19 we read like this when it was evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples are met were locked and jesus came there so the first day of the week means it's a sunday on one sunday jesus appeared to the disciples and saint thomas was not there and all the other disciples all the 10 of them were there present and then jesus spoke to them so on the sunday when they were gathered together jesus came to them and then after this the disciples went and met the uh, thomas and said we met jesus then thomas said unless i see him and put my finger in the wounds that he has i will not believe so i don't want to i don't want i don't believe what you all say i want proof i want to experience him so this is all what he said that is why we call him doubting thomas but in fact we all christians around the world we all go through the same kind of attitude of saint thomas for example even when i am preaching these things you may be wondering sometimes may, some people may wonder is what father say everything is true or not is he preaching the truth is he can, how can i believe these things have you ever thought something like this have you ever th- have you ever had some thoughts like this in your mind that means your name is also thomas so uh, this is what happens anyone who doubt you know this is very quite natural saint thomas is a representative of all of us who doubts the preachings sometimes when we listen to certain preachings is it true is it true all what he preaches 
we ask this question in our mind is it real is it true is it a, is it some reality that he is preaching so when you are able to when you are not able to believe in certain truths which are proclaimed by the messengers of god or the preachers or the priest remember this is exactly what happened to saint thomas he heard his other disciples were coming and telling him we fo- we saw jesus then thomas said no i want to see by myself i want to experience him myself praise the lord so that was what happened to saint thomas so he wanted he insisted i want to see jesus because he had already faced a tragedy he never expected jesus to be crucified and dead and buried but he saw it it was a big tragedy for saint thomas and therefore now he didn't want to face another tragedy so he want to make sure what he believes is the truth and that is why he asked show me i want to see him and then we read like this um we read like this verse 26 we read like this a week later a week later praise the lord we um a week later of uh, his disciples were again in the house and thomas was with them a week later means it was almost 8 days after it is it is said in it is 8 days after they were gathered together again and then saint thomas was with them 8 days so that means again another sunday the next sunday within uh, after one week on the eighth day when they were gathered together jesus came another sunday that is why in the in the if you re- re- look into the bible jesus always appeared on sundays mostly let's read another passage gospel of mark chapter 16 was 19 sorry ni- was 9 was 9 we read like this now after he rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene so he appeared on the first day that is on sunday and then when he appeared to the first disciples again or that was on sunday when he came and appeared to the saint thomas it was on sunday and that is why in the early church early christians they considered sunday as the lord's day and the sunday they used to come together for worship they used to come together for breaking of the bread let us read acts of the apostle chapter 20 verse 7 Acts of the Apostle chapter 20 verse 7 on the first day of the week when we met to the break to break bread Paul was holding a discussion with them since he intended to leave the next day he continued speaking until midnight on the first day of the week when we met to break bread that means on the sunday they came together for the eucharist breaking of the bread means eucharist on sundays that is how the sunday celebration started until then it was saturday considered as the most important day but for christians sunday became most important day and the lord's day because on those days jesus on sunday jesus was resurrected on sunday jesus appeared and sunday early the old early church used to come together for breaking of the bread let's read first corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 and 2 First Corinthians chapter 16 was 1 and 2 Now concerning the collection for the saints you should follow the directions I gave to the churches of Galatia on the first day of every week each of you is put aside and say whatever extra you earn so that collections need not be taken when I come So Saint Paul is giving instruction on the first day of every week when you come together that means on every Sunday when you come together for the worship you have to take collection so collection so this is what saint paul is instructing the church in corinthians my dear brothers and sisters all whatever that we are practicing today was practiced from the first century from the early church even these collections during the holy mass the breaking of the bread all these things are there from the first to century it is the 2000 year old years old practice that is taking place in the church that is why the sunday celebration the lord's day the feast of sunday the feast every sunday is a small miniature of the easter so so every sunday is a feast of easter a small easter 
that is why normally if any feast comes on sunday we don't celebrate and other those feast of the saints because the lord's day is more important than the feast day praise the lord thank you jesus so let us go back to saint thomas we read like this saint thomas uh, he uh, was 26 a week later his disciples were again in the house and thomas was with them although the doors were shut jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you jesus came and spoke to them and was 27 then he said to thomas put your finger here and see my hands reach out your hand and put it on my in my side do not doubt but believe so jesus said come and touch my hands he jesus showed all the wounds his wounds here in his hands and side and everything and said come touch that means when thomas was doubting thomas was questioning the other disciples jesus heard it jesus knew it and now jesus is coming for him only and then jesus said come and touch my wounds and believe and then was 28 thomas answered him my lord and my god the one of the most powerful declaration of the faith there are two declarations there are most famous two declarations in the bible that is the first one peter's declaration jesus you are the son of the most living god most high god and now the second declaration my lord and my god saint thomas saint thomas declared my lord and my god he is acknowledging the divinity of god he is saying you are god then jesus never said no 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 i am not god don't call me like that he didn't say that but jesus said he acknowledged he accepted jesus is known as lord and god that that is why the gospel of john the culmination of the whole gospel is this word my lord and my god declaration of the divinity of jesus christ and then verse 29 we read jesus said to him have you believed because you have seen me now you believed because you have seen me he didn't say you have believed because you touched my wound that means thomas never dared to touch the wound though he said i want to touch the wound but it it is almost sure that he didn't touch the wound because he didn't want to he would never dared to because he was already shocked and he doesn't want to get into another shock so he he did not touch the wound most probably he may not have touched it that is why jesus said you believe because you have seen me and what did jesus say you who believe because you have seen me my growth you are with me when, when i was preaching you were there with me you saw me performing miracles casting out devil healing the sick raising people from death walking on the water calming the sea rebuking the wind multiplication of the five loaves of bread for 5000 people you saw me and you saw me dying and you saw me resurrected therefore you believe but blessed are those who have not seen yet have become come to believe now jesus is pronouncing a blessing on certain people who is that he is pron- pronouncing a blessing on certain people who are they blessed are those who have not seen yet have come to believe who are they that is you and me we all are we have not seen jesus preaching there we have not seen jesus calming the sea we have not seen jesus reduce rebuking the wind we have not seen jesus casting out double we have not seen jesus multiply multiplying the five loaves of 5000 people we have not seen the crucifixion we have not seen the resurrection yet we believe in jesus christ and jesus says blessed are those who have not seen yet have come to believe so it's a pronouncement of blessing on all of us is a special blessing which god jesus is giving to all of us my dear brothers and sisters therefore as uh, on as, as being the july 3rd in this july 3rd in this year has got a speciality because the the church is celebrating the 1950th anniversary of the martyrdom of saint thomas on this day so as this celebration is going on let's remember saint thomas believed 
when he had a faith crisis jesus did not perform a miracle to increase his faith jesus did not perform a mighty miracle to increase his faith jesus did not do any special blessings for saint thomas to increase his faith jesus did not do any healing for saint thomas to increase his faith but jesus showed his wounds so that he may increase his faith my dear brothers and sisters when you face crises in your personal life especially when you are lacking faith in god come to the wounds of jesus christ look at the wounds of jesus christ the five wounds of jesus christ these wounds are for you these wounds are the expression of his love for you these wounds really tells you how much he loves you therefore the best way to increase your your faith in jesus is to look at the wounds of jesus anyone who is going through a faith crisis jesus is inviting you come to me look at my wounds look at my wounds on my side look at my wounds on my feet and my hands and believe do not doubt i love you so much i died for you these are the expressions of my life my dear brothers and sisters if you have wounds to show no one will leave you i remember one day when i was when i visited a family a rich family and then uh, uh, the husband and wife were business people were busy with so many work and children are taken care by one servant lady old lady and i was having a uh, dinner with them because they were the ones who arranged the retreat for us and then uh, i was with them and then i saw their small child fell down just be- behind us it's a small fall but i knew this child little child is going to cry and run to the parents as i i thought as i thought the child started crying and then started running i i thought is is the child is going to the father but the child did not go to the father i thought then the child will go to mother but the child did not go to the mother the child ran to the kitchen and embraced the that old lady who the servant lady who was taking care of her then i knew the mother was just standing next to her but this child did not go to the mother she went to the kitchen and held the old lady who was taking care of her all throughout her life the real mother gave birth but another mother brought her up and this child could see the wounds in that mother not in her real mother and therefore when she was going through a tough time she did not run to a real mother she ran to that mother who has wounds for her that old lady had lots of wounds for her because she was the one who was giving her bath giving her food making her sleep carry her giving her bath everything and therefore this baby this child loves loved that lady though it was another woman who gave up gave birth to her but this old lady became a true mother for her because she has wounds to show if you have wounds to show for someone that that person will never leave you if you have wounds to show if you have wounds to show your children that wounds of love your children will never leave you they cannot leave you even if they happen to leave you they will come back soon otherwise they cannot sleep peacefully the guilt will haunt them my dear brothers and sisters therefore jesus is showing his wounds and he is attracting all his disciples it is through by looking at the wounds of jesus true conversion takes place there are so many disciples who saw the miracles he all the tall disciples saw the miracles jesus performed 3 years all the miracles mighty miracles raising lazarus from death death people were risen all these miracles but when jesus was crucified all of them ran away judas betrayed peter denied all the others ran away even leaving their clothes behind what does it mean they lost their faith complete they lost their faith but there was a centurion when jesus was being crucified there was a centurion standing under the cross looking at the way jesus was dying this centurion looking at the body of christ jesus the centurion said truly he was the son of god he believed not by seeing a miracle but by seeing the death of jesus my dear brothers and sisters if anybody wants to really and truly believe 
you will see look at the wounds of jesus and believe that is the true conversion and the true belief all those who are seeing the miracles and believing that is only an excitement when there is another suffering excitement will go down and they will lose hope and lose faith but those who have seen the wound of jesus those who have touched the wound of jesus their faith will never fade they will never lose the faith because these wounds will attract them forever these wounds will hold on to them hold them close to jesus it they will never be able to leave jesus and that is the speciality that jesus showed here jesus said all those who are unbelief those who are un, un, non believers not are ready to believe not ready to believe come to me look at my wounds put your finger in my wounds look touch my wounds and believe do not doubt praise the lord let's close our eyes and as we uh, pray together let us close our eyes and examine our conscience and see do we have this lack of belief if we have lack of belief don't search for miracles and wonders but come to the wounds of jesus and look at the wounds that he did and he went through for you and for me for our love for the love of you and me and be believe in our lord jesus christ you will never regret